tonight. Let's jump into the Word of God. Let's see what God's Word has for us this evening. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to be looking at two passages of Scripture this evening. One, we were looked at in the book of John, but we're going to look at it in the book of Luke. Luke chapter number 7. Luke chapter number 7. We're going to be looking at verse number 38. Once you found that, turn over to John chapter number 4. John chapter number 4. We'll be looking at verse number 24. Or in the middle of two happenings. Neither one of these are parables. Both of them are things that are happening as Jesus is ministering. But I'd like to tie these two thoughts together tonight as we look at our worship that honors Christ. Our worship that's on, that honors Christ. Amen. I, I want to honor Christ, don't you? Amen. Amen. I want to be a sanctuary of worship. Amen. I, 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 even if it's just being an audience of one, I want to be that audience that gives my attention to God and gives Him the glory for the things that He has done. And so uh, Luke chapter number 7, verse number 38, the Word of God says, And stood at His feet behind Him weeping, and began to wash His feet with her, her tears, and then wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed His feet, and anointed them with ointment. Amen. Speaking of the woman with the alabaster box. And then let's jump over to John chapter number 4, verse number 24. We're looking at the woman at the well. Amen. I'd like to combine both of these tonight and bring a thought to us. The Bible says, Jesus speaking to the woman at the well, He said, God is a spirit, and they who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Worship honoring Christ. Amen. Worship honoring Christ. Uh, uh, when we look at the woman with the alabaster box, all of us are very familiar, I'm certain, with that story. We've looked at, at, at her, and we've talked about her, particularly in Bible study in John most recently. We find that uh, a Pharisee has invited Jesus in for a meal. And as the Pharisee invites Jesus in for a meal, the Bible says that, that uh, there they are. And in those days, uh, 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 as they were eating together, there came a, a woman. The Bible says that she was immoral. Uh, she was a sinner. Uh, she is this woman who has been known for her immorality. But as she comes in, she comes in to honor Christ. And although she's criticized, Jesus debunks the criticism, amen, and, and, and gives her a praise for what she has done. So what's noteworthy and what's praiseworthy about this woman that, that we can gain from her, that we can better bring honor and worship to Christ? Well, I believe that there are some things tonight that, that we've come and, and our very presence and, and our purpose in being here tonight is that we want to honor Christ. Amen. That's why you're here, because you love Christ and you want to honor Him. So, Brother George, what can we learn from this woman with the alabaster box, particularly in this one verse, in verse number 38? What can we learn about uh, Christ and worshiping Him? Well, let's look at four things that this woman did. Brother Steve, I believe that these four things... Uh, Brother Doug gives me an understanding of how I need to worship Christ. The very first thing the Bible says that and stood at his feet behind him weeping. Now when we bring Brother Justin uh, John into this, we understand the story even better. The Bible says that she washed his feet with her tears. Wow. She washed the feet of Jesus with her tears. 
I'm not talking about an emotional stir where the tear runs down your cheek. I'm talking about uh, there is enough sobbing and weeping and crying that it produces tears, Sister Beth, that you can wash the feet of someone. Wow. What a powerful story. Here it is that the Pharisee invites Jesus and Jesus come into my house. What, what he was inviting him there for, Naomi, we don't know, but he obviously did not treat Christ right when he invited him in, Brother George, because when he invited him in, it was his responsibility because of, of the day in which they lived. There was no macadam or blacktop. There wasn't a stones to walk upon, but, but there were dirt paths and they wore sandals. And so when the sandals and the dirt passed, you would find that dirt would come upon the feet of individuals who were walking, not just particularly Jesus, but anyone. And so it was the duty of uh, uh, the man of the house or the one who invited the guest in. The very first thing that they should do to, to their guest would be to wash the feet of their guest. It would be refreshing. It would be renewing. It would be the appropriate thing in their custom to do is to wash the feet of Jesus. But he didn't do it. He invited them in, but not with respect and not with honor and not with courtesy that he washed the feet of Jesus. But the Bible says that there came a woman with an alabaster box and she came in and she shows the kindness of washing Christ's feet with the tears from her eyes. Maybe it was because Brother George the Pharisee didn't do it because it was a humble act. He would have to humble himself to wash the feet of Jesus. But in comes Mary and Brother Eli in a humble manner remorseful over her sin, remorseful over where she's been, crying both with sorrow and with joy. Sister Dietrich crying because of the sinful life that she lived and, and the sad sin that had her bound. And sin brings pleasure for a moment, but, but we know the interim result is it brings death and it brings heartache. And so she's heartbroken, Brother Justin, over the sinful life that she's lived. But she also realizes that there is one who can forgive sin. And so Brother, Brother uh, Dennis, she begins to weep and cry over her sinful nature, but she cries with joy knowing that the Savior is the one who can forgive her. Amen. She's not laughing over her sin and she's not rejoicing in her immorality, but she is sorrowful for it. We live in a world that, 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 that they joy over immorality. They laugh over uh, carnal things and, and things that break the heart of God, uh, but her heart was broken and with sorrow and joy she washed the feet of Jesus. She washed so in honor of Christ, I wonder tonight, when's the last time that we just cry over where we've been but what he's promised? We've cried because of the joy of what he can fix in our life. We take the humble position to wash his feet. The Bible says that not only did she stand at his feet weeping, the Bible says that she began to wash his feet with her tears. The Bible says that she began to dry his feet, or she didn't wipe them with the hairs of her head. So she dries his feet with her hair. Wow, how interesting. Now, the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen 15, that, well, let me turn there, let me read it. 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. 
for her hair is given for a covering. The Word of God says this, that a woman's hair is her glory. By nature, men really aren't designed to have long hair. They just aren't. Don't want to lose out with anyone. I mean, read previously in the text. Amen. It says that not nature itself teach you that if a man have a long hair, it's a shame unto him. Uh, 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 wearing long hair on a man really just doesn't go with the nature of a man. But but long hair on a woman is really her nature, isn't it? We see uh, as we look at, at women. And so the Bible says that her hair is her glory. So not only has she humbled herself to wash the feet of Jesus, but, but now we find that she sacrifices her glory at the feet of Jesus. Uh, she's not afraid to, 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 to get her hair messed up. Can you imagine? Here she is, the feet of Jesus there, dirty and dusty. She begins to cry, and, and the tears running down. And Brother Justin, she wash, wipes, uh, washes her, his feet with her tears, but she wipes and dries them with her hair. And so now she has tears and this dirt that she's wiping off the feet of Jesus that it's getting in her hair. She's not worried if it's all curled right or upright or positioned right. All all she is concerned about is that she worships Jesus. She says this, my glory doesn't matter. What matters is that Christ is glorified in my actions and in my life. I want to tell you something. We cannot have glory in our life and glory God at the same time. We cannot take glory in this world and glory in Christ. God help us tonight that our worship is to Him. That it's about bringing glory to His name and not about Praise God. Amen. To honor Christ. Not to honor this world and the things of this world and ourselves. She washed his feet with her tears. She wiped them with the hairs of her head. And the Bible says this. The third thing that I recognize is that she kissed his feet. I, I, I don't know about you, but 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 to kiss someone, and I don't go around kissing everybody, but to kiss someone is to show affection to them. You know, I I I, I anytime I leave the house, I kiss my wife goodbye. I, I kiss my girls goodbye if they're awake. Uh, before the girls go to bed, okay, the last thing we do after we have our devotional time is we kiss them. Good night, Sister Dietrich. It's our affection to them because we love them. Each of you they know what that's like. Someone who you love and you have affection for, you, you, you kiss them because it's a sign of your affection. Here it is, not only did she humble herself, and not only did she lay her glory down at the feet of Christ, but she loved Him, and she showed her affection to Him. Amen. Love honors that which is important to us. And so here it is. We live in a world full of immorality. Can I just say a few things tonight? Let me just say something. I realize that we live in a world where folks don't get married because they would lose benefits from something else. And so so, so, so they live together. Or, or, or they live in immorality. Or they say, I don't need a piece of uh, a paper to show that I'm married. Uh, I, I, it's a commitment. Of, well, God's Word says it's immorality. It is. And so we live in a world that, that is fixated on immorality so, so, so they don't understand what real affection is about. Amen. But when we get our moral compass adjusted by the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, and we fall in love with Him, amen, our affection is driven toward Him and we can't help but lavish our love upon Christ. What, what, did, what did Christ say to the church in Ephesus? He said, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. It wasn't that you lost it. You chose to leave it. You left your first love. God wants us to be passionately in love with Him. Tonight, worship is about showing our affection to Christ. I love Him. I love Him. So I'll be affectionate toward him. 
When's the last time you just told the Lord, I love you? I love you, see. The Bible says that she anointed his feet. God talked somewhat about this, and I won't stay on this long during Bible studies. But we find that here it is, the alabaster box, she anoints his feet. It cost her a lot to give to Christ. Here it is, thousands of dollars in our day and age to be able to break that alabaster box. But Sister Dietrich, she said, I'll pay the price. I'll pay the cost. Malachi had a problem. He began to talk to the people. He said, I, 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 I need to rebuke you because you're offering sacrifices to God, but you're offering with blemish. You're offering animals that are sick and that are lame, and you're keeping the best. God wants your best. I need to tell you tonight that when we give God our alabaster box, we're saying to Him, God, I give you my best. So worship tonight is about giving God our best. So worshiping Christ. But you may say, Brother Seville, so how is it for us? We worship Christ, Sister Barbara, but we don't see Him in a physical body. It's not like you can reach out and touch Him like you can, Brother George. So how do we do that? How do we do that? Uh, G -G, how, do, how, how do we worship God? We do, I can't touch Him. Because Christ took care of that. He answered that question to us when he met a woman at the well, Brother Justin. He said this. He said this to her. He said, listen. He said, I want to straighten out the mess about worship with you. And he said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, I'm not adding to or taking away from the Word of God, but in the original text, uh, when we look, uh, there is not that, that article that's there like a or the. Really, if we would read in the original text, it would say God is spirit. God is spirit. He's not a spirit or the spirit. God is spirit. And they who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Well, why did He say all that, Brother Justin? It's because He wanted us to realize, amen, that God needs to be worshipped in a spiritual nature. Amen. It's not a physical nature. It is a spiritual nature in which, which we worship God. You see, God said that He was a jealous God. Uh, we were to have no other gods before us. And to have gods before us, Brother Doug, it would be this. They would be made out of stone or out of wood. Or maybe they would be a mountain. Maybe they would be a sun. But God says, I am not those things. I am a spirit and you need to worship me in spirit and in truth. You know, in our day and age, uh, Brother Mila, we don't need to come to a sanctuary or we don't need to come to a church. We don't need stained glass windows or we don't need to, to have all these things surrounding us. We can worship God anywhere because God is a spirit. Amen. And God wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We don't need flags waving. Amen. What we need is a spirit Spirit that we worship. I want to say this, we don't even need songs. Yes, I understand it can help the atmosphere that we worship, but real worship is this, that we worship God in spirit. Amen. Because God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Tonight to worship God. Sister Dietrich, we don't worship Him physically, although this body is what moves to make our spirit. But I can worship Him in my body and never worship Him in my spirit. Jesus, He dealt with that. He said, They draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So, Brother Steve, I can say that I worship God, but never get my soul and my spirit into it. But God wants us to worship Him, really just in spirit and in truth. 
That means sincere worship. Worship that doesn't go through the motions and never engage, it engages the heart. But God wants our heart to be in the center of our worship. For where our heart is, there our treasure will be also. There's been times I've prayed before and my heart's not been into it. I have. Because it's easy sometimes just to put it in coast. But it is, I know the words to say. Sister Dietrich, I know the routine to go through. But God is not honored by that. But when my heart gets to the place, Brother George, where it's engaged with God, God, that I love you and I worship you in spirit and in truth. The depth of who I am, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Amen. But when our heart, our soul, and our spirit gets into it, we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We may not be able to touch Him physically. Amen. That's a struggle with a lot of folks. They need something they can see. They need something they can touch. But God wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We don't need to touch Him physically. Amen. Our soul and our spirit needs to reach out to Him. Amen. The Bible says, and in truth. What does that mean? It means this. It means that everything that we do in our worship is in accordance to the Scripture. This is truth. This is truth. You know, there's some folks who worship and it doesn't line up with the Word of God. They're not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Those who don't want to be like the woman with the alabaster box, I want to honor Christ. We can. But we have to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That means in accordance to God's Word. Are we living the way God wants us to live? We lift up holy hands. Holy. Without wrath. And without doubt. Amen. And worshiping. Yeah. God longs for real worship. God longs for real worshipers. We be the one who will honor Christ. And I don't want us to do this. Sister Holly, that song, I worship you. Almighty God. Peace and help. Can you come and lead us in that? Tonight, I want us to stand right where we are. You want to come to the altar? You can't. I'm not eliminating the altar. I believe it's important. But tonight, I just want us in these next few moments of our service before we close. We just honor Christ. Amen. Sister Bethany, come and play. I want us tonight to worship God. For the honor of Christ. There are so many in the world that says, I've invited God in. They've invited the men, but they've not washed his feet. Tonight, can we wash our feet? <coughs> Whether it's by physical tears or as we think about what God's done for us with sorrow of our past and with joy of what he gives to us, could we worship God? Could we tonight say, God, all my glory, I lay at your feet. We can't be on both sides of the fence glorifying ourselves and glorifying God. It's not about us tonight. It's about Christ being glorified. And then can we just lavish kisses upon Him because we're affectionate of who He is and what He's done. And then can we say, God, whatever the cost, I will pay the price to worship You. 
because I worship you in spirit and in truth. Let's not engage our hands or our mouth tonight, but let's engage our heart and our spirit just to worship God in these final moments of the service. Whether you stand, whether you sit, amen, whether you sing, whether you engage just in other singing, tonight the most important thing I want us to do is to honor Christ with our worship. Let's sing.